Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to the Domino Theory television program. I, of course, am your uh, commentator, and I am in New Orleans, Louisiana. Well, actually, Kenna, Louisiana, a suburb of New Orleans, and we are talking to a young lady who I've admired over the years. Uh, she's involved in a lot of um, community activities. So, without further ado, we're going to let her introduce herself, and she's going to tell you just who she is. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm Sabrina Short. Um, I am the youth ministry strategist for the Louisiana Conference of the United Methodist Church. I'm also a wife of Pastor Kasim Short of Thomas United Methodist Church. And I also am executive director of the Fountain of Youth Foundation, um, which is a uh, nonprofit organization that focuses on youth leadership and employment. Okay, and how long have you been doing this stuff? Oh, my goodness, since uh, right after Katrina, um, I came to New Orleans uh, to be a part of the rebuilding process with my husband and son. Um, and back in uh, 2007, 2008, um, started community organizing um, to uh, help the citizens of New Orleans um, address quality of life issues, address education issues, um, sanitation issues, um, as they come back to their communities and rebuild. Um, and from there, uh, I guess I organically grew into a space of serving and helping others and helping young people particularly um, get access and understand what their opportunities are to grow into productive citizens. So how is it working? Oh, it's working great. Um, right now, as the conference youth ministry strategist, right now I particularly work with churches to help them serve youth in their local communities. Um, we recently were granted by the General Commission on Race and Religion, which is um, an institution of the United Methodist Church, um, to help urban and ethnic congregations um, get the resources that they need for their local youth ministries. I find that in the San Francisco Bay Area, we have uh, a number of church-oriented programs, but we have very low participation. Are you facing the same type of situations, or do you have a lot of... One of the reasons why we started this initiative called the Youth, uh, Youth Worker Network Initiative um, through this grant is to help congregations build infrastructure. And what we find is because there's low participation, low engagement, it's really because the churches don't have the infrastructure for long-term sustainability. We find that a lot of churches kind of run from programming to programming without the real foundational things that they need to have a sustainable youth ministry. So through this grant, we provide one-on-one -on -one technical assistance to congregations throughout the Louisiana Conference to help them really evaluate and assess what uh, the needs are in their community and identify what types of um, strategic planning and thinking they need to do in order to really serve their communities and the youth within them. You say you came uh, after Katrina to help. Where'd you come from? I lived in Seattle, Washington um, for almost five years and I worked for United Way of King County um, along with my husband as well. Um, we were fundraisers um, uh, starting out in what they call um, uh, they called, oh my goodness, <laughs> workplace campaigns. And from workplace campaigns, I went on to major gift fundraising um, where we recognized um, major donors in the Seattle area. Seattle is one of my favorite places. I've never been there, but I, uh, I'm a Seahawk fan. So anyway, <laughs> with that said, moving right along. Uh, so you, you told me something that you were involved in now that I found very fascinating. You, you said that you do uh, quite a bit of traveling, and what capacity is that? So as the Conference Youth Ministry Strategist, I represent the state of Louisiana, um, the United Methodist Churches in our state, um, which makes up about 500 congregations. So I travel a lot from congregation to congregation, um, 
learning about their ministries, the things that they're doing. Um, sometimes I speak and sometimes I run programming as well. Um, I have conference-wide or statewide programming that I offer to churches um, who want to bring youth together for connected um, relationship and discipleship and fellowship. Um, and so I travel all over the state and sometimes outside of the state. Uh, and when I travel outside of the state, I'm talking about the programming and um, the ministries that uh, we're doing here in Louisiana Conference and also connecting with other conference leaders in the United Methodist Church. Well, that certainly sounds wonderful. Uh, <clears throat> we need to have something, uh, somewhat, I'm sure we do, but I just don't know about it in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area. You have a son, young son also, I understand, uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Justice, and... Um, how is he coming along in school, and how does that relate to what you're doing when you see the school system and it's, the way it's run presently? Well, um, my son is 10, so he's very, very young in, in the whole scope of education. He hasn't been at it long. <laughs> but um, as far as how he's adjusting, he is in a school that focuses on create create an environment for young people to learn and 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 sort of instilling um, basic fundamentals that allow them to compete on a global level and that's something dear to my husband and myself as we've lived in other places in the country we feel that it's important for young men especially young african-american men to really understand how they fit into society on a global level um, so we really um, value not just ABCs and one, two, threes. We really are looking at how our son can really think differently about his role in society, how he can become a leader and be able to seamlessly um, create a space for himself in a global market. I understand the need for parents to be involved in their children's uh, education. I, I, I'm just all for that. But I find that a lot of people just uh, at this point in time aren't. What do we do to get parents more involved in what their children are doing, especially in schools? I, I, I'm on the fence on that issue. Um, just simply because economics plays a really big part in how much parents can be involved. Um, my husband and myself, we're very fortunate where we have flexible um, careers that allow us to uh, attend activities in, at school in the daytime uh, where we have the transportation to be able to go to our son's school um, and, and be engaged or volunteer or meet with teachers on a regular basis. That's something that we're able to do because of uh, you know our employment situation. But there are a lot of families who are not as fortunate, who are working two or three jobs, who have multiple kids, who don't have transportation, um, who have limited time, who just really cannot invest that amount of time in their child's ed education. And so they're really trusting um, their schools to be able to provide the things that their child needs so that they can be productive citizens when they get out. And that's really the unfortunate thing because I grew up in a time where my grandmother couldn't really be as involved in my education, but I was sort of surrounded by a community that that filled in the gap for her. Um, and I think we're lacking that um, in today's educational system, particularly in New Orleans where, pa where parents cannot we feel that, I feel that the community should step in where they can, and, and that's just not happening. Um, we're looking at children as a dollar sign and a number to an end result to a profitable system. Um, and it should be, here's an individual that we're investing in and, and loving them, caring them, showing them things, providing opportunities for them to grow and develop. Um, and that's just not happening like it should. Um, so what do you see for the future of New Orleans uh, schools? The future of New Orleans schools, I really can't predict that. But what I hope is that... That's what I meant. What, what do you what hope What I hope to see? is that there are more community leaders who can take the educational system as it is and create spaces for that sort of um, filling in the gap space um, where where the parents cannot, 
um, that there are nonprofit organizations, mentors, uh, corporations that can come in and sort of provide this wraparound holistic care that our children so desperately need. You showed me some videos of some kids uh, that some kids had made uh, just a while ago. What's the name of that group? Uh, what was the name of that group? Um, well, my foundation, the Fountain of Youth, um, has uh, had a summer program that we uh, did for four years straight where uh, we partnered with local universities and we invited um, youth who are juniors and seniors in high school to come in and basically gain skills for long-term employment. And the program is called Power Tech. And that program, you know, uh, connected our young people to professionals, educators, uh, community leaders, um, all types of people that can show them something different outside of their current environment. And the program that you saw uh, was our multimedia program. We also had um, an art program and we also had a ready to work um, program as well. And all of them were focused on providing opportunities for young people to connect with someone in a field that they were interested in and be able to um, be involved in a project-based learning um, connection that gave them hands-on experience in the field that they were in or interested in. So I am going to show, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, if I can download some of those videos from YouTube. Uh, Ms. Short just showed me two, uh, I think, well-produced um, videos that were done by those young people. And they're accessible through YouTube, but I'm going to show them if I uh, possibly can along with this interview because I think that was fascinating. Um, charter schools, we talked about that briefly. Uh, without getting you in too much trouble, what do you think, <laughs> what do you think <laughs> is the future of locally run chartered schools in the New Orleans area? I feel that charter schools have a place. I believe that there are opportunities within charter schools. Um, but I, I'm, I'm going back to being an advocate of charter schools working with the people who are on the ground. Um, I think there's a value in a child seeing someone um, being involved in their education long term that they can look back and say, I, I know that person. They helped me when I was in the fourth grade. They read to me. They took me on a field trip. Um, they mentored me. They tutored me. They took me on a college tour. They gave me access to a field that I was interested in that I had no idea existed. I think charter schools partnering with the community and the leaders in the community is the best way to really serve a child, especially when you have so many teachers who are not from the community, who do not know the culture, and who may not understand the dynamics um, that reside in that, in that community and the families that reside there. I think there's a value in making sure that there is sort of a cultural competency when serving our young people. And the only way to do that is ensuring that our charter schools are partnering with the people who have the best interests of our young people at heart. It sounds good. Okay, I am a staunch advocate of education, especially for the younger uh, African-American kids. Um, at this point, I think that we're headed uh, backwards. I see the educational system, uh, like you were saying, when I was coming up, I, I still remember my fourth, fifth, and sixth grade teachers, uh, their names, uh, basically where they lived. And how many times they told my grandmother stuff that I did that I shouldn't have been doing. Exactly. So uh, a community interest in the schools, I think, is very essential. You have a school uh, that you are possibly going to help out, which is located near your church here, uh, which is called? It's the Washington Montessori. Washington Montessori. And you want to get uh, what? Um, our partnership started with helping uh, their students with school supplies. And we realized that the schools have way more needs than just school supplies. As we visited there and met with the principal and the teachers, even some of the students. And we realized that they needed books for their library. Um, we realized that they needed a uh, playground 
for their school and they needed mentors to help with um, tutoring young people to help them with their testing. So um, our church has committed to helping that school and we were recently funded through the United Methodist Church to not only continue the partnership, but begin really investing in the school long term in those areas. That is absolutely wonderful and I wish you the best of luck. Uh, you also want to build a playground there? Yes, I would like to build a playground there and um, prayerfully um, through the organizations out there who could help uh, donate playground equipment and toys and um, funds that will allow us to really provide a space for young people to be able to play, grow, exercise, and engage. So just in case somebody should happen to see this, where should they send this? Uh, their donations or their input or their volunteer efforts? Thomas United Methodist Church, 420 Webster Street, Kenner, Louisiana. Sounds good. And you're once again? I'm Sabrina Short. I'm the Conference Youth Ministry Strategist and the wife of Pastor Kasim Short of Thomas United Methodist Church. I want to thank you so much for this interview. Thank you very much. And you take care and have a happy new year. Thank you. Happy new year to you too.